It is always darkest before the dawn, but no matter how dark it gets, the sun will always rise. The light of dawn was about to manifest itself upon the eastern horizon, and the sun, which was to illuminate the whole world, was about to rise. In this week's episode, we will discuss the first revelation vouchsafed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The year was 610 AD, and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was 40 years old. And as we already know, the Holy Prophet was in a desperate search for God Almighty in the cave of Hira. It was in this state of restlessness that the Archangel Gabriel appeared before our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ikra, read. The Prophet responded, I cannot read. Hereupon the Angel Gabriel took hold of the Prophet's chest and tightly pressed it against his breast. And he repeated, read. Again, the same response from the prophet, and again, the same response from the angel. For the third time, the angel Gabriel commanded our prophet to read and tightly pressed him against his chest. It was then that the angel Gabriel conveyed the very first revelation to Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Read thou in the name of thy Lord who created. He created man from a clot of blood. A, Read, and thy Lord is most honorable and eminent, who taught man by the pen, taught man what he knew not. After this angel disappeared, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was left in a state of extreme astonishment and trauma. His heart was panting, for only God knew what this matter was and what was about to take place. Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned home to his wife Hazrat Khatija and relayed the events that had just transpired. He said, O oh Khatija, I fear for my life. But Khatija Radiallahu Anha, who was well acquainted with the nature of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, No, by God, Allah will never disgrace you. You treat your kith and kin with love. You're truthful. You assist others in discharging their responsibilities. You have gathered within yourself the lost virtues. You are hospitable. You are a helper to others in the way of truth. Thereupon, Hazrat Khatija anha took the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to her cousin, Waraka bin Nofal, who was well versed in the scripture of past prophets. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, related this entire occurrence that just happened. And when Waraka bin Nufal heard this account, he said, The same angel who visited you is the angel who also conveyed divine revelation upon Moses. I wish that I remain alive to see the time that your people banish you from your homeland. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, asked, my people will banish me? Yes, responded Waraka. Every prophet that God has commissioned in this world was persecuted by his people. And if I remain until that time, I certainly shall assist you to the utmost of my capabilities. However, Waraka could not witness that time because he passed away shortly thereafter. But we are not Waraka. We have lived to see the advent and spread of Islam across the world. And it is our duty to protect and cherish this gem that God has bestowed upon us. We are those individuals who have been commissioned to help the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his promised Messiah Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. How are you and I, how are we helping Islam? Today, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being maligned and slandered across this world. But what are we doing to protect his honor? 
What are we doing to spread His message across the world? This is only a brief glimpse into this week's readings. For more information, please refer to the Life and Character of the Seal of the Prophets, pages 167 to 202. Inshallah, until next time. Thank <laughs> you.